Hi friends, um, welcome to our 40 day live um, streaming to you using this book, Purpose Driven Life. Um, yes, we've had quite a lot of questions, people asking when are you coming live today and what's going on. Um, sincere apologies, uh, it's been a really, really busy day, very, very heavily packed full because um, today happens to be Mother's Day and that's why you can see the flowers around from friends and from my handsome, handsome young son. He bought me this book of roses. So it's been a really busy day and going from our time here in the UK is 10.30 in the night. But we still are committed to coming to you and that's why I decided to just make sure I get this video done no matter what's going on around me. Because a lot has been going on around me happy mother's day celebration with the kids my kids came from her school just to be with us so well what can i say we thank god for everything but our commitment to you has been we're gonna come live and we're gonna chat with you for these 40 days working with this program that we've decided to take on which is the purpose driven life what's exciting about today is it's quite an interesting one um, we are going on to day five and day five is saying to us seeing life from God's view remember yesterday we were talking about um, you know something different we we're looking at let me see what we talked about yesterday we we're talking about we being made to last forever and humans that we are we we, we tend to feel really down because we thought we were meant to last forever. And so when we tend to move on from this life to the next, we get really upset and then, you know, people can take it. Uh, but somehow the Bible has reminded us that we may last just 70 or 80. And this book is telling us we may last up to 100 depending on how healthy we are. But we're not made to last forever. And now we're trying to see our life from God's view because initially we were seeing it from our view. So um, there's been quite a lot of messages coming from this book. And if you're watching us for the first time, it's a 40 day journey we're taking on and we're trying to uh, make sense of this book that's really helping us to understand who we are and what's the purpose we're here on this earth for. So if you're coming to us or watching us for the first time, this is day five and we're coming live on Facebook, we're coming live on Instagram and we are recording this for YouTube. So if you wanna get the background information about this, go on our YouTube channel, World of Braiding, and you will see day one, day two, day three, day four, and today day five, so you can catch up with us. Um, because what we don't wanna do is keep going back on what we talked about um, because again time is not so much on our side because there's a lot going on around us so today we're seeing life from God's view that's the title of today um, and we're going to try and understand what this means what is what is your life what is your life um, and it gives us a passage in the Bible James 4 uh, verse 14 it says the way you see your life shapes your life the way you see your life so the question first is coming to you what is your life and you should answer yourself because whatever you answer is what's going to shape your life and I can tell you one thing since we started doing this program since I started reading this book I'm a lot lot more calmer now I can I can see things from a bigger view now I can I think I'm more gradually getting in touch with my spirit and I don't know how you are finding it but please if you've been following us and you are finding something interesting from what we're doing here and you want to ask any questions please feel free to ask us questions give us a big shout out if you're just joining us if you want to say hello and you want us to say hello back please do that and we'll say hello back to you but what I found personally which is why I wanted to take this journey with the rest of you is I'm finding I'm a lot more calmer, I'm getting a lot more lessons or a lot more messages for my life. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an example when I finish with today's passage. Um, one of the most amazing things that's coming through looking at this book 
He says, what is your life? That's the question we asked. And he said, the way you see your life shapes your life. So whatever you are telling yourself is your life, is what's going to shape what you see as your life. He said, how you define life determines your destiny. He says, your perspective will influence how you invest your time. So whatever perspective you take on life will determine so many things around you. It will determine how you invest your time. So the time you spend on anything will be based on how you see your life. It will determine how you spend your money. So any money that comes to you, the way you have seen your life will determine how you spend that money. It will determine how you use your talents. So the talents that God has given you, um, I think in the last, last chapter we talked about talents, but maybe I think we're still gonna talk about talents today, which will again carry on. The way you see your life will determine how you use your talents. And this is one of my talents. My ability to sit here and chat with you is a talent. Because I know so many people who say the minute they see a camera, they freak out. So it's not everybody that's made for everything. Some of us are great at some things and some of us are not. So whatever you're great at is your talent. And the way you see your life will determine how you use that. He says, um, the way you see your life will, value, will determine how you value your relationship. So relationships are with your friends, your family, your, your spouse, you know, your, your, your children, your parents. The way you see your life will determine how you value that, those unique relationships that you have in life. And he says, the best way to understand other people is to ask them, how do you see your life? So that's one of the questions I'm asking you now. How do you see your life? Because how do you see your life? Um, there are many different ways that this question, this, that people answer this question. And some of them will say to you, life is a minefield. Some people will say to you, life is a circus. Some people will say to you, life is a roller coaster. Some people will say to you, life is a puzzle. Life is a journey. Life is a symphony. Life is a dance. So everybody comes up with various answers of what they see life as. Say so sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down. That's life. We hear, you know, I have a book that's called Peaks and Valleys. So sometimes it says, um, Life is, you're at the peak and sometimes you're in the valley. And I remember my cousin, he says it, topsy turvydom of life. So life takes you up and down. That's, that's kind of like saying a roller coaster as well. Sometimes it takes you round. Some people say life takes you round and round. So whichever way you want to see life, that's the way your life becomes. So if someone asked you how you picture life, that image becomes your life metaphor. Metaphor being what you have created. He said, it's the view of life. That image is your life metaphor, we said that. He said, it's the view of life that you hold, consciously or unconsciously. So you have held an image in your mind. You know, you're consciously thinking about it or unconsciously thinking about it. So we're given these instances of roller coaster, peaks and valleys, ups and downs. That's what you have created. It's your description of how life works and what you expect from life. So whatever you have described life to be, that's what you expect from life. And so people express life metaphors through various things. So some people would like to tell you what life is through various things and these things are usually images so sometimes they will say to you life they, they express life through their clothing you know the fashion the clothes they wear sometimes through the homes they live in through the cars they drive through the jewelry you, you wear through the education that you take on and so your metaphor influences your life more than you can imagine so whatever this metaphor is you created whatever this thing that means life to you you created it's going to influence what you do in life 
So I know so many people who their understanding of life is education and that's it. Let's get to whatever highest level of education there is. And so their meaning of life is let, let me go there and educate myself as much as possible. And so some of us is we just want to see life as business. Let me just keep running one business on to another. And some of us are just looking at life as you know a huge fun. Let's have so much fun. Let's let's party. Life is all about party. And so your metaphor influences your life more than you can imagine. And it determines your expectations. It determines the values you give life. It determines the relationship or the goals or the priorities that you give life. For example, if you think life is a party, your value is to have fun. That's the way you see life. Life is fun. Life is a party. So you're always having fun. And if you see life as a marathon, you know, those, those you know, the people who run those long races. Now, what comes with long races is endurance. And so, if you saw life as a marathon, you're going to be thinking endurance. Let me, let me just endure whatever it is that comes my way. But the person who had seen life as party is having fun. Let me just go out there and have as much fun as possible. So it's all about the metaphor you have created that's creating what you are seeing. You may therefore be basing your life on a faulty life metaphor. That's what he's trying to explain to us. He says, if we've created life in all these images and saying life is this and life is that and life is that and we have based all of that to determine the values that we give our life. He says it's faulty. It's faulty because all of these things are things we created here on earth. These are things that society has made us believe. Conventional wisdom and replace it. So we have to start challenging all these things that we've put in our head that this is what life should be. And we have to change it and bring in a biblical metaphor. And it says, the Bible says, do not conform yourself to the standards of the world. So that's where the, you know, the, 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 the metaphor we've created, that's where they come in. We've said life is fun and so we're having a party or life is a party and we're having fun and life is a marathon and we're going for endurance. But we should not do that. We should not conform to the standards of the world. Do not conform yourself to the standards of the world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complex change of your mind. So what comes into your mind? Through the ideas that God will give you, that's what will make your world. Not all these things that we have created here. Then you will be able to know the will of God in your life. So it's until God has given you what life should be, you will not know what the will of God is in your life. Because remember the title of this book. It's all about the purpose that God has given us. Thanks, Crystal. We love your comment. Thank you so much. We're quite happy to, you know, hear your views on some of the things we are picking out from this book. So he's trying to tell us that we should allow God to transform our thinking. Because when God transforms it, you will be able to know the will of God in your life. And that's what we're here to understand. Because from day one, what I've said is, there's a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And one of the things this man also said in this book is, what on earth am I here for? So the big question for all of us, we're trying to understand what the message is that God really sent us here for. Because we don't know why we're here. We have no idea our reasons for being here. He says if we can allow God to create this metaphor for us, we will then know the will of God in our life. And he says, Bible offers us three metaphors. Three metaphors being this is what God wants from us. He said, number one, life is a test. That's a really good one. And I'm going to delve into it. The second one, life is a trust. Life is a trust from God. And the third one, life is a temporary assignment. So you remember we said we may live up to 100 years, that's when we're healthy. 
So it's a temporary assignment. It's not a permanent thing. And that's why in the last chapter it was asking us, you know, we shouldn't we, we think we are here to last forever. You know, physically here on this planet. But we are not. So it's a temporary assignment. So let's look into life is a test and life is a, is a trust. So that's what today is all about. Um, he pushed life is a temporary assignment to the next page. I mean the next chapter. So we're going to get to that later. But let's look at the first two. Because like I said, um, today's Mother's Day. We've been really, really tied down with time. And we just had to come and do this because we, it's a promise we made. So life is a test. God is continuously testing us. Continuously. There's no end to our test. So he's testing our character. He's testing our faith. Is testing our obedience, is testing our love, our integrity, and our loyalty. So, words like trials, temptation, refining, testing, etc., they all come in to explain what this testing is all about. God tested Abraham to offer his son Isaac. Remember that passage in the Bible? So, Abraham's been desperate looking for a son for as long as he was. And then he has this one child, and suddenly God says, go and sacrifice that boy for me. Now, how many of us parents would do that today? That's what they call a test. So the one child he has, go and sacrifice this boy for me to prove your love to me. And Abraham just willingly did it. He willingly took his son to the old, um, to the, to the, where he was going to sacrifice him. And he actually did raise his hand with a knife and God said, stop, now I know how much you love me. Turn around and there's a cow, I can't remember what it was, that was waiting to be used for the sacrifice. So that was a test. And then he gave another example of where God tested Jacob when he had to work extra years to earn, the, to earn Rachel as his wife. Another passage in the Bible. So when you go into the Bible, there's so many places where God is testing our faith, testing our, you know, testing our love and testing our obedience and testing our character. And that's what's happening to our life here on earth constantly. We are always under test. And so I'll give you an example because I'm, the reason I took on this book to read, I've been going through a lot of tests. I mean, now I can relate to it. Then I didn't understand it. I didn't know what it was. I just knew things had started going out of expectation. You know, like you, you humanly, you're thinking in your human form and you're thinking, but it's not working the way I'm thinking it should work. And so you, you're doing everything humanly possible and it's not happening. So I'm thinking to myself, I don't know what's going on here anymore. You know, I was having emotional issues. I was having financial issues. I was having um, relationship issues. And so looking back now, I can see how much test I was under. And when you're under test, you just have to know what you're dealing with because we cave in as humans. It is so easy to cave in. But see where it's led me? It's led me to sit here with you today to read this amazing book. So that's how test happen. You could be really pulled to your, to your bones. And I hear people most times, this is when they go, but I don't know what God I'm serving anymore if things are happening so bad for me and he's not listening or helping me. But this is what this book is trying to tell us. We're going through the metaphor of text because otherwise we create our metaphor of what life should be. But no, this is where God is telling us what it should be. It's a test and you are meant to overcome it. And so the other one, Adam and Eve failed in their test. In the garden of eden so god then gave them a test and say okay i want to make sure that you you don't touch anything don't touch this one you can do anything else but don't touch this one and that was the one they touched so david failed in his test david was a king and i'm trying to some of these bible passages i'm remembering my years in secondary school he was a king and there was one time he had to take somebody's wife as well so many times he failed 
is something we need to remember and this is where we as humans need to know that some of the things we go through sometimes it just God testing our faith testing our trust testing our obedience testing who we are so Bible has those who passed so many tests and he, he wrote lots of them Joseph Ruth and so many characters but character is developed and revealed by test and all of life is a test we are always being tested that's just one of the metaphor you have to take on today from this passage we are constantly being tested and it's for us to overcome it just like the people we just talked about so god watches our response to people god watches our response to problems he watches our response to success he watches our response to conflicts to illness to disappointments. See what we just talked about? So all these things, when these things come to your life, how do you respond to it? Do you allow it to overcome you? Or do you stay strong and overcome it? Do you learn something amazing from the test? That's one thing you want to start picking up today. He watches our every response. We don't know all the tests God will give us, but we can predict that there will always be series of tests. That's what makes us who we are. That's what makes us stronger. So he gave an example. He said, delayed promises. So you've been praying and praying and praying for something and it's not happening. You, you know what we do? We give up. We say, God is not listening. Um, he said, impossible problems. Sometimes the problems are ridiculous and out of this world. And you want to wanna give up. He said, I don't think there's any God. Unanswered prayers. Undeserved criticisms. Now that's a good one because obviously we, we do a lot on the social media, you know, Instagram and YouTube and all of that. And sometimes you get so many ridiculous criticisms. I mentioned an example yesterday how sometimes when I used to watch uh, Kim Kardashian and, and the people that follow her and their mouth of criticism. So it's like, some people just sit there and just want to criticize. They don't know what they're talking about, but their job is just to criticize. And sometimes you just sit back and you take it on. You take it on back. You see, reading books like this just strengthens you. It makes you understand that, you know what, these are just tests. It says, um, senseless strategy, uh, tragedies. So sometimes you hear someone has died. Yesterday I gave an example of someone who died and or maybe a young child just dies or all kinds of tragedies happening all there. You, you hear of tsunamis or landslides or, you know, uh, so many things happening out there in the world and you just get so angry sometimes. And you say, but why is these things happening? These are a series of tests. A very important test is how we act when we can't feel God's presence in our lives. So that's a very good example or, or a good scenario where we now need to know. So we looked at all these things that's happened to us or happening to people around us and then we query, but, but where is God? It's a test. And when we understand that life is a test, we realize that nothing is insignificant in our lives. So that's a big message from this chapter. All we have to take on right now is that all the things we go through mostly in life, they're just a series of tests. And I, I'll give you a good example. I mean, today, yes, we, we've been very busy and so much has been going on. And then we're just ready to take on this program of coming live. And then we just found out that all the phones were dead, all the batteries had gone. And my regular self, I would have flipped. I mean, I would have like, why? We, we knew we were going to do this. Why? How come? But I just remembered because I read the passage ahead of you. So I just remembered. I said, okay, this is just one of those instances where this is a test. Then we had all the meals all done. They've been cooking all day. And so my kids said, oh, mom, but we need to eat. This is Mother's Day. When are we going to celebrate? And I said, okay. Put the phones in for charging. Let's go have the meal. You see how I just diffused the whole thing. And then by the time we came back, batteries were ready, and now we've come live. So all these series of tests that go on in your life, how do you cope with them? That's a big question. And these are the things we want to 
overcome by the time we're done with this book. Because it says, once you know, when we understand that life is a test, we realize that nothing is insignificant in our lives. So no matter how small this thing is, you have to mentally prepare yourself and know that this is just another test again, you have to overcome it. So even the smallest incident has significance for our character development. So it says every day is important. Every second is a growth opportunity to deepen your character. So every second that passes, like the few seconds I had to go through realizing my camera were all down and I couldn't do the videos, those counted. Every second is significant. To demonstrate your love, every second is important. To depend, I mean, to depend on God, every second is important. Some tests seem overwhelming, and others don't. You don't even notice them. So this is what we're just trying to explain to you that everything counts. Everything you do with right from now onwards, they all count. They may be insignificant, or they may be overwhelming. The good news is. <coughs> that God wants you to pass the test. That's the good news. Because if you're calm, if you're collected, if you're relaxed, and you say to God, let your will be done at all times, you find that you overcome this test, whatever this test is. No matter how huge they are, no matter how small they are. Part of the chapter says, life on earth is a trust. So the first one, life is a test, because then you remember we have created our metaphors and we are acting on the metaphors we have, but this is a real metaphor from God. First, life is a test, now life on earth is a trust. You see, our time here on earth, the energy we have, the intelligence we have, the opportunity we have, all the relationships we have, family, friends, spouses, children, parents. All the resources we have on this earth, they are all gifts. They are all gifts from God. And He has entrusted it to us. This is where the trust comes in. Life is a trust. God has entrusted us with all these things that we have for us to care for it and for us to manage it. We are all stewards of what God wants us to do. We are stewards of what He has given us. This explains that God is the owner of everything and everyone on this earth. And we never really own anything during our brief stay on this earth. So we're 100 years old, for instance. <coughs> everything that we think we own, none of it is ours. Because we are only here on a brief mission. This brief mission of, we keep going by 100, because that's what he says. But I know the Bible also says 70 or 80, so... Let's just keep having those numbers in our heads. God just loans it to us while we're here. So whatever it is we've accumulated, the houses, the, <coughs> the clothes, the jewelry, the amazing trips that we take on, um, the job, whatever it is we've accumulated, the bank account that is full with money, whatever it is, it says it's a loan from God. And God will loan it to somebody else after we're gone. So once our time here is done, somebody else is going to take possession of these things. And this is so true because especially when it comes to houses. I mean, the other day I was having a chat with my sister. And you were just saying that about, you know, somebody owns a land and somebody is going to farm the land. And because I'd started reading this book. I just laughed and I said, you know what, I'm really not interested in hearing this story. Because what is it about land? No one goes anywhere with this land. You know, I just looked at Facebook now and somebody followed me and goes, oh, his wife has just passed on and rest in peace. And you hear this every day. You hear so many people just going, passing on. Their 50 years is done, their 70 years is done, their 100 years is done. And then people are still fighting over a piece of land. And they still want to know who's farming a piece of land. And who owns a piece of land. 
If I can find a place to live in and be comfortable, I'm done. I'm not interested in all that arguing over physical things, earthly things. <coughs> I'm in love to wear beautiful things. Yes, because they look pleasing to my eyes. I just enjoy them. But trust me, I don't attach any more meaning to these physical things than, than necessary. And that's what we should take on. God just loans it to us while we're here. God loans it to us. So we need to always remember that. Once we're done, he will learn it to somebody else. So everything we enjoy is to be treated as a trust that God has placed in our hands. Bible says those who are trusted with something valuable must show they are worthy of that trust. So God gave us this trust. We should learn and remember to hold on to it really well and treat it with respect. Most people re fail to realize that money is a test and trust from God. God uses finances to teach us to trust Him. And for many people, money is the greatest test of all. So most of us, we have money and we just think that's the end of the world. But we don't know it's a trust from God. And it's something that we really should cherish and take good care of. And so Bible says, if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who would trust you with the true riches of heaven? Because if you cannot hold the things here with good trust, things that God has given you here with good trust, how are you going to be able to really hold on to what God has given you in heaven? And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow, but thank you so much for watching. And we hope we are coming across to you with good messages. Please, please feel free to write to us and chat with us and tell us what you are experiencing in your life if you're listening to this series. Stay blessed and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you so much.